you very much for granting me the opportunity to share my data with you today. Um, the focus of my talk is about microRNAs as downstream effectors of cancer pathways in colorectal cancer. So the question is, can we identify microRNAs that are deregulated following mutation frequently occurring in colorectal cancer, and can we target them uh, for therapy? Uh, just a very uh, brief background about um, colorectal cancer. So colon cancer arises because of mutations in oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. So it comes with no surprise that the best option to tailor cancer treatment is actually to tackle mutated genes. However, this approach has a couple of drawbacks. Number one, most of the genes we are actually looking at are tumor suppressor genes, and they are lost in cancer, like APC or P53, and it's quite challenging to translate into the clinic the re-expression of a gene. Uh, the second point is about the fact that when we try to tackle a specific pathway driving carcinogenesis, after two weeks, we see resistance in the patients because of the activation of collateral pathways. So the question is, can we find effectors which are uh, downstream of different pathways that merge on the same microRNA? Uh, microRNAs are uh, small non-coding genes. Uh, they do not encode for any protein. They actually have an effect in controlling uh, messenger RNA expression by causing post-transcriptional uh, deregulation of the messenger RNA. And there are several lines of evidence supporting a role for microRNAs in colon cancer in several solid endomatological malignancies. And more recently, uh, my former group published a paper suggesting that in lung cancer, uh, some microRNAs might be downstream effectors of EGFR pathways. So the approach we try to uh, use to define microRNAs deregulated by cancer pathways was to run in parallel an analysis between mice models characterized by a very specific uh, background in terms of mutations and looking at the same time in cancer patients to find which microRNAs are actually deregulated and how they are deregulated. The next question was then to find out whether these microRNAs were actually driving the carcinogenesis, and then eventually try to define these microRNAs as target for therapy. Uh, we started our analysis by looking at, at whole genome expression analysis of microRNAs in two different models. One is a model, is a mice model of colorectal cancer, where mice develop tumors due to the loss of APC in the colon. APC is a very early event in driving colon carcinogenesis. Uh, the second model was linked to a simultaneous association between uh, a procarcinogenic stimulus and inflammation. And it's a very complex model uh, because it's associated to the acquisition of a number of mutations in several genes involved in colorectal cancer. When we uh, analyzed the expression profiling, we were clearly able to define normal versus cancer tissues. And more importantly, we were able to define microRNAs that are up or down regulated in colon cancer. We focused on MIR-135B because it was the most importantly upregulated in both models. And we focused on upregulated microRNAs because we thought that translating these in the, into the clinic might be easier rather than re-expressing something that is lost. We moved, uh, moved ahead uh, validating our finding by real-time PCR. And this slide gives you two informations. <coughs> Number one, the fact that yes, MIR-135B is actually overexpressed in cancer compared to normal tissues in both models. And the other important observation is the fact that uh, cancers from AUMDSS model, so cancers from the inflammation-related model, express higher levels of MIR-135B, suggesting that probably there is a kind of sequence in the acquisition of MIR-135B overexpression through different mutations. At the beginning, this was just an hypothesis. Uh, we were also able to validate our finding by in situ hybridization for MIR-135B in tissues and tumors from mice. Uh, and then we moved in patients because, OK, this microRNA is deregulated in mice, but what about humans? We uh, analyzed uh, sporadic colorectal cancer in the first place, and we defined an upregulation of about four-fold change in cancer compared to normal tissues. 
More importantly, we were able to establish a kind of correlation in the progression between MIR-135B overexpression and stage of colorectal cancer. The same findings were observed in inflammatory bowel disease-associated cancer. And the nice observation here was the fact that dysplastic area nearby the cancer already show upregulated MIR-135B, suggesting that probably MIR-135B is an early uh, event in colon carcinogenesis. And again, the insight to confirm the presence of the microRNA in tumor tissue with no expression in stroma or inflammatory cells. What about survival? Well, uh, we have limited data. We are now try trying to validate this data in larger cohort. But basically, high MIR-135B overexpression was associated to poor survival. It failed to prove a, a, a correlation with survival in stage 2 colorectal cancer. Which, has, which are those cancers where we would need more biomarkers, actually. But we are now validating this analysis on a clinical trial in Glasgow. So we hope we might be able to validate the findings. Um, so OK, this MIR-135B is upregulated in cancer, in mice and humans. Is that just a bystander event that might be useful as a biomarker? Or is also involved in promoting cancer progression? Well, this is a very long story that might take 40 minutes to explain. And I try to summarize it in a very simple slide. Using isogenic cell lines, mouse embryo fibroblasts engineered to harbor specific mutations in key oncogenes or oncosuppressor genes like APC, PI3K, or SARC, we were able to define at least three pathways, APC, SARC, and PI3K, that merge on the same microRNA. More importantly, when we modulate the expression of the microRNA in vivo and ex vivo on spheres isolated from the bowel of the mice harboring specific mutation, we were able to observe an effect in proliferation, in terms of increased proliferation, reduced apoptosis, increased invasion. Uh, at this point, we moved in vivo. Uh, can we try to reduce the number and the size of the tumors by giving anti-MIR-135B in mice. Uh, we designed a specific probe to target MIR-135B, uh, <coughs> a specific oligonucleotide. We tested the oligonucleotide in vitro in the first place at different concentration. We were able to see that it was working at very low concentration, like <coughs> 5 nanomolar. There were no off-target effects which is quite important because you want to target the specific microRNA. You don't want to target anything else. And we were able to prove that our compound was sticking in the bowel of the mice after 72, 96 hours from the IP infusion. And we did that by designing a specific probe that was actually able to recognize our anti-microRNA 135B. <coughs> Uh, this is the classic schedule by which we induce tumors in mice by giving uh, azoxymatin to induce the carcinogenesis and then inflammation to trigger re regeneration. These mice develop a number of tumors after three months. We gave these mice from the very beginning, so if you will, was a kind of chemopreventive study. We gave anti-MIR-135B to the mice. And after three months, we sacrificed the mice and counted and measured the tumors. Uh, what we found was roughly a 40% reduction in the number and the size of the tumors, with a shift in terms of uh, bigger tumor to smaller tumor in mice treated with the probe anti-MIR-135B compared to the scrambled probe. Uh, Looking at the histology, we were able to see uh, more differentiation in tumors from mice treated with anti-MIR-135B, uh, while tumors in the control group, the scramble probe, were poorly differentiated in keeping with data already published. Uh, we were able to confirm the actual downregulation of the microRNA, both by real-time PCR and in cyto hybridization in tissues from mice uh, in the three different arms of the study, the control, the scramble, and the anti-MIR-135B. And eventually, we studied uh, proliferation and apoptosis. 
And the most striking effect was actually related to uh, proliferation with about a 40% reduction in proliferation in mice treated with the probe against MIR 155B. Uh, there was also an effect, a mild effect <coughs> on apoptosis, but uh, was not striking, to be honest. Uh, we then defined mechanisms by which MIR 135B uh, actually work. So we infected uh, cells, normal epithelial cell lines from the colon with MIR 135B, and we ran a, an array to look at genes deregulated or affected by the MIR. And we were able to actually uh, define at least four genes, we are still working on more targets actually because that's the uh, peculiar thing about microRNA, a single microRNA can actually affect dozens or hundreds of genes. So we are still working on more genes, but we were already able to define at least three, four genes that are involved in apoptosis, <coughs> proliferation, and invasion. Uh, we validated the direct interaction between the microRNA and the target gene by a number of luciferase experiments and Western blot. We also ran a number of functional experiments looking at single genes and rescue experiments, but I think I don't have time to show them today. So in conclusion, we proved that MIR 135B is overexpressed in cancer, both in mice and in humans. It's not just a bystander event that we might use as a biomarker, is actually driving the colon carcinogenesis. By targeting this microRNA, uh, we can achieve uh, a reduction in the number and the size of the tumors in mice. Uh, I will stop here. I just want to thank all the collaborators in the study, some in the UK. Actually, I forgot to mention my Italian colleagues and most of them in the States. <laughs>